Okay, so if you're wanting to do uh, a binomial distribution for methods and you're needing to create a probability distribution table uh, and then you also need to calculate the mean uh, and the variance, it's really, really tedious when you have to do it manually and have to go through uh, like calculating the x squared values and then multiplying them by the probability and, and all the rest of it. So what we're going to look at is how to automate that using the list and spreadsheets function on the TI Inspire CAS. Uh, it works very similarly on the Casio class pad. You'll just use uh, statistics and you'll use lists wherever I'm referring to columns. Uh, and then at the bottom of the screen, there's a cal row, uh, which is where you put your functions in. On this calculator, it's at the top. That's really the only difference, but otherwise the instructions should be the same across the board. So what you can do is if you put X as your label in column A, that's gonna represent your X variable. Then you're gonna put P in the second one. This is just logically to represent probability. Uh, the next thing then you'll do is we'll put E. And so this is gonna mean that the numbers that go in this column are to do with our expected value or our mean. And then finally, we're gonna put V here for variance at that point. And again, it won't actually be the variance, but it'll be the numbers that are used to calculate the variance. So it's just logically named. So then the next thing um, that we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our uh, X distribution. So for a simple example, let's say we were rolling a die and we have six different outcomes, one through to six. The probabilities, it would normally be one out of six, but just to make it a little bit more interesting, we'll make it a weighted die or a bias die. Um, we'll do it out of twelfths. So I'll put in here and uh, just go with two twelfths. There we go. Um, then we'll put in three twelfths, so it's up to five twelfths so far, making sure it adds to one. Um, then we'll put in another two twelfths, so that's seven twelfths, uh, one twelfth, that's eight twelfths. And then we'll do maybe three to put it up to 11, and then one twelfth, there we go. So then the next thing that we'll do is we'll go into the expected value numbers, and we're gonna use the function. So again, on the Casio class pad, you'll go to the cal, It'll sit kind of at the bottom of the screen around about here. And we're just gonna type equals. And from here, we can just do X times P. Um, you can use, uh, yeah, well, you can use times. I'm doing it on the computer. So if you've got the computer app, uh, shift eight for the asterisk for times. And then from there, you'll just choose variable reference for both of your variables like that to make sure it works. And it spits out all your uh, X times probabilities. I'll come back to that in a moment. We're gonna do everything at once. Now to get our E of X squared values, we're gonna go equals under V, X to the power of two. So X squared, it's gonna multiply that by P and it's taking our variable references from column X and column P. And again, the same thing. We'll choose variable reference for each one. And it spits out all of the X squared times probabilities. So that's gonna save you a lot of time. And finally, if we just jump over to a free spot here, what we're then gonna do is go to statistics, stat calculations, and two variable statistics. And again, this is the same on the Casio class pad. You'll go to calc uh, and then two variable. It's, slight, it's one less step actually. Um, and so, and from there, there we go. So it brings up this dialog box and under the X list, uh, you would use, you're gonna put uh, your E values. So that's gonna give you your expected values. And under the Y list, you'll put V like that. You won't have to touch anything else and hit okay. And so what this is gonna do is if we look to the sum of the X values, keep in mind it says X, um, but it's actually our E values. This would be the sum of all of your X times P's. So right there is gonna be your expected value 3.25. Um, and then for your variance, it's not quite gonna give you the variance, but it gives you the E of X squared. So that's gonna be your sum of Y, because these are already X squared times P. So the sum of all of those is right there. It's gonna be a 13.25. And so really what we could do, we could even type it in here. Um, if we wanted to get our variance, then we can just put in 13.25. Uh, take away 3.25 squared, because that's e of x squared minus e of x all squared, like that. Um, and then it spits out the number. You can also do that in the 
the calculator as well. And there we go. So that's all you have to do. Um, that way then you don't have to manually do the tables. Obviously in exam one, you do have to do it, but they'll keep the numbers relatively manageable. And in the SAC they may do it, but in the exam, it's very unlikely they would get you to fill in an entire distribution table. They're more likely to get you to fill in one missing part of it. But uh, if it's CAS active and you need to work very quickly, then you can do it on the CAS. And the great thing is this still has all of your numbers. So you can make it look like you did it manually by copying in all of the uh, X times P values and the X squared times P values. Uh, and it won't look any different, but you've still got all the information to show you're working out. And there we go.